Good morning. My name is Dave Burdick. I'm the product manager for Bentley Luminar T, and today we're going to talk about how Luminar T integrates in with Synchro to create amazing images and videos. During this presentation, we're going to cover the following topics. First, a discussion on how to get models from Synchro into Luminar T, and we'll describe the workflow. Secondly, we'll tell you how to load Synchro models directly into Luminar T. Then we'll go through some how to's inside of Luminar T where we'll show you how to create synchro animations, how to add date and a text display, adjusting materials, and then how do you enliven enrich scenes with Luminar T content. Then we'll show you how to create really nice uh, images and videos. And then finally, we'll talk about a few coming attractions in Luminar T Update 16, which will be out shortly. So this diagram explains how models go from Synchro into Luminar T. Basically, it's a very simple process. You start with your Synchro 40 Pro model. You upload that into the Synchro Control iTwin Hub. And from there, you pull it into Luminar T Pro. So here's how it looks inside of Luminar T. The first thing you do is you fire up Luminar T. And inside, you log into the iTwin with your Bentley user account. Then you select your project and I model, and the file loads into Luminar T. So let's talk about how do you create synchro videos inside of Luminar T. Basically, what happens here is that we import all of the synchro animation directly into Luminar T, and then give you the ability to set camera points of view and to uh, set the timeline. So the first thing you want to do is to open the video timeline editor. Uh, and in it, you'll notice that there is a default one-minute video clip of the synchro animation that is automatically created. Uh, secondly, what you want to do then is to set the beginning and end time of day. So this allows you to set the sun and make sure that the time of day is exactly how you want it. So let's take a look at how to do that. So here we are inside of Luminar T, and the first thing we're going to do is open up the timeline. And you'll see that there's two keyframes here. This is the default timeline that's created when you import a synchro model. Now you notice when I scrub through this, we can see that not only is the animation changing, but the time of day is changing. And you can set how you want that to appear by going to the atmosphere editor and setting a keyframe for whatever time of day you want. So in this particular case, I'm going to set the keyframe, the last keyframe, to equal the time in the first keyframe. So while we still have the synchro animation, there's no sun animation to it, and that is what most people generally want. Now let's create a custom movie clip inside of Luminar T. To do this, we first open the video timeline editor and create a new clip. Then we make sure we have to enable the time animation in the atmosphere editor by clicking the clock icon. Then we create keyframes by simply moving the camera and capturing the keyframe. And finally, we set the desired date for each one of the keyframes and then update and refresh the keyframe. So let me show you that in action. Okay, so I just go to my timeline editor, clip create new clip, and you'll see the first keyframe there. Again, make sure that you have the uh, time of day animation set on so we can animate the construction sequence. Uh, so now I'm going to move in with my camera and notice when I do this, it automatically creates a new keyframe for me. So I simply say, yep, that's what I want. Capture that. So it captures that camera point of view. And now I'm going to change the time for that particular keyframe. Now I'm going to create a third keyframe and zoom out. You'll see the empty socket for that. Now I click, yep, that's the one I want. Capture it. And then I want to set the date to a little bit further forward in the future and capture that. And now I'm going to go ahead and play the animation. You'll see the whole sequence run. So this is very, very handy when you want to uh, be able to zone in on specific aspects of the construction sequence and create your own custom timeline. Let's now add a date text display to the scene. To do this, we open the text object menu and click the plus sign to add a text object. And we select the on-screen object. This allows the screen to be constantly facing the viewer no matter what camera angle that you are using. Uh, and then secondly, we set the date parameter. Uh, by default, uh, it comes up as a date, and then you can actually type whatever you want in the text box. So let's go see how we do that directly inside of Luminar T. 
select our text from the menu and then click the plus button to create text indicate that you want on screen text so that it's always facing you and you'll see it pops up in the upper right hand corner here we're going to move it to the center of the screen and then you can adjust the actual text in this case we're just going to keep the date and then we're going to adjust the size of the font and now we have our text and you'll see that when I play the animation the date actually moves accordingly Luminar T has a complete material editor to really make your scenes come alive and be able to adjust the appearance properties of all the synchro geometries that you bring in so you can really make these look much nicer by adding metallic materials or adjusting glass materials or changing colors etc there are several ways you can change materials inside of Luminar T. The first way is to select the object and adjust the material parameters, or you can select an object and load a preloaded or pre-created material of your own custom material or the use uh, one from the library of Luminar T supplied materials. And we'll show you examples of both of those approaches. So we begin by selecting our object tool. Let's select this yellow pole here and change the color of that. Let's make it a uh, more of a gray concrete color. And if you like, you can actually adjust the properties. Let's make it a metallic pole by increasing the metallic property and then setting the roughness. So now we've got a metal looking pole there. If we zoom in, you can see the reflections and the specular highlights. Now we're going to actually load a pre-made material from the Luminar T material library. So I just select on the three dots here. We have a variety of materials in the library. Let's select a flat gray material. And if I want, I can actually adjust the properties of this as well. So let's make it actually a little more metallic looking. So if you zoom in, you can see the speculars here as well. So now we come to the real fun part, which is to enliven scenes with Luminar T content. Luminar T contains a very large catalog of plants, trees, characters, and vehicles and objects in order to breathe life into your scenes. And what I'd like to demonstrate now is how we can add life to the Luminar T scene here. Let's begin by adding some characters. To do this, we select the character tool. And in this particular case, I'm going to draw characters by a bounding area and then populate it. So I can have regular populations. I can adjust the distance between those populations. I can also have random populations and then set the density. One of the really slick features of Luminar T is the ability to draw traffic. Here I'm going to draw a pedestrian line of traffic of people walking along this parking garage structure. So I simply point and click, draw the path, that's the end of my path, and say, OK, and then it'll populate it. I can set the density. I can set the number of lanes of traffic. I can uh, change the type of people that are walking the traffic. So it really is a very, very flexible tool for giving you very, very nice traffic patterns. Here's another example of using the traffic tool, but this time with vehicles. Same process. You simply select the tool. You point and click where you want the path to go, and then you select Populate. And magically, you have these beautiful vehicles. And you can set the lanes. You can set the speed of the vehicles. You can set the number of the vehicles as well. Finally, let's add some vegetation to the scene using the Vegetation Population tool. Works identically to all of the other object population tools. You simply select the Vegetation Populator. In this particular case, I'm just going to brush in some plants and trees. You can also set the uh, season for the trees. If they're seasonal trees, you can see them changing color. And of course, you can set the wind to see the leaves blowing. So now that we have our scene finished, we can go ahead and export images and videos. To export an image, you simply right-click on the camera button and then set the image output parameters. So here you can set things like uh, the resolution and the format. For videos, you go into the timeline and select Export Clip 
and then set the video output parameters. Once you select OK, it'll go ahead and begin rendering the video, which will take a few minutes depending upon the number of frames that you have in the video. And here is the finished video. So you notice that we now have some traffic in the scene, we have some vegetation in the scene, we have some characters in the scene, we've adjusted materials, uh, we've added a date to the top of the screen, and of course now we're uh, seeing the output of the actual video itself. So in under an hour, we've gone from the synchro model to a very, very nice enlivened live cube scene that you can now distribute to your customers and clients. So we're getting ready to release Luminar T Update 16 just around the corner here. And it contains a number of new features, several of which uh, I think are very interesting for the Synchro group here. Uh, the first is the ability to render images with much higher fidelity using ray tracing. So if you have an RTX-capable card, you can now create these very, very high-resolution photorealistic images using ray tracing, as you can see on the image here. And then finally, we're offering the ability to display the Synchro timeline directly in the Luminar 2 user interface. Thank you for watching, and at this time, I'd like to open up for any questions or comments you might have.